please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Well, one of the concerns, and you've served as ambassador there in, uh, in China, again, this concern, ma'am, is the fact that, like Ambassador Saran said, obviously the, the, the gap between India and China is increasing, and that is a matter of concern. But more importantly, is China keeping India boxed in its neighborhood? Now, you speak to, and ironically, you speak to Chinese scholars, they say the incredible rise of the United States, for example, post the Second World War through much of the second half of the 20th century, was because there was no one to challenge the US and its military dominance on either ocean. Is India getting boxed in by growing Chinese influence in our own neighborhood, whether it's Maldives, whether it's Sri Lanka, now Nepal? Well, I don't believe a country of India's size can be termed as having been boxed in. Uh, the fact is that in South Asia, we are the dominant country by virtue of geography, by virtue of the size of our economy, our capabilities, our population. So there is really no comparison with our smaller neighbors. This is not to suggest in any way a superiority complex, but I sure. think we have to read the tea leaves and we have to be conscious of the reality. Now, as far as China is concerned, I think China is uh, a aspiring superpower, let us put it that way, but whose aspirational ambitions are built on a great deal of insecurity also. Mm -hmm. Why you do you know, say that? Uh, well, you look at the way it perceives, for instance, India's relations with the United States. You know, the fact that it is being hemmed in by a closer understanding and cordiality between India and democracies in Asia. So let's not discount the insecurities on the Chinese side. Okay. I'm not in any way trying to give China you know, an allowance on that sure. basis. But I'm just saying that when we talk of geopolitics, when we talk of geostrategy, when we talk of geoeconomics, as you mentioned, I think, in one of our discussions, I think you should be aware of this also. Okay. It, you know, the world is not exactly round. It's not exactly even. And our region is no exception. I think when it comes to how we deal with the rise of China and how we deal with the challenges posed by the very visible, perceptible strength of yeah. China. I think, first of all, we must understand that geostrategy, as you define it, has to be built on the basis of demography, on the basis of geography, on the basis of political strength and stability, and economic heft. I think it has to be a combination of all these factors. All of these factors. And we have to obviously cover some distance. I, Mr. Saran, Ambassador Saran mentioned the fact that China has progressed a great deal and that we have some catching up to do. I think I'm very much reminded of Tang Xiaoping's uh, dictum of about 40 years ago about how you lie low and bide your time mm. and uh, understand what your strengths and capabilities are. I think there are, there are lessons to be learned yep. from that. H hide also. your claws and your, and your teeth.